Hey guys, it's Gordon from Hale Family Homestead in Northeast Florida. Recently we received a comment on one of our bee videos asking for a video on everything you'll need to start beekeeping. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now The first thing we're going to do is start with the basics. I choose to wear this beekeeper veil. It's a cowboy style. I like it because of the brim. It kind of keeps the sun out your eyes. And then also I wear some gloves. It's gloves that you would put on and they come up to about your elbow. It varies from beekeeper to beekeeper what you wear. They offer full suits, half suits, which is just the jacket, it, it has the gloves and it has a veil. So there's different things out there for different people, but this is what I choose to wear. Now that we got your outfit down, we'll talk about what tools you're going to need. There's different kinds of hive tools here. Our first tool that we got was this one. We didn't really like it because it's hard to get the frames out with this type of tool. So we got this one. This one has this pretty handy hook on the bottom so you can get right under the frame and pry it out and it works like a dream. We prefer this one. Once again though, every beekeeper is different. Another important item that you're going to need is your smoker. But when you go to work with your bees, whether it's installing them for the first time or any time that you're going to check on them, you should give your bees a little bit of smoke and what that does is it kind of puts them into a survival mode and they'll start eating a bunch of honey and they'll all go into the hive all the bees that are on the front of the hive they'll all enter in and it makes it a lot easier to work the hive. At this end of the table we've got an entire hive set up and I'm gonna break it down and show you all the things you're gonna need. The first things first we'll start with the lid. Our beehive here has a telescoping lid. So what I mean by that is it's got two parts. This is the first part and there's this. The reason that there's two pieces is that if this were not there and you only had this lid, the bees would seal this up. And see how it goes down on there? You wouldn't be able to get your hive tool in there to pry it open to get this off. So that's why there's this secondary lid right here. And once you take the first top off, you can easily get your hive tool in there pry it off. Another reason that we prefer this lid is that it offers a little bit better protection. It's got this metal on top which obviously as the rain hits it it just runs off. It's not going to rot away the lid like other lids that are just wood. It's just one piece of wood on top and you'll put your feeder up here and eventually with the rain sitting on there they'll start to sink and then it's just going to rot away pretty quick. Here we have our super. This is where you'll get all your honey that you're going to harvest down the road. This is just a regular 10 frame super. Here's what the frames look like. I believe they're six and a quarter inches deep. Now I'll take the super off and show you the brood box, the lower level of the hive. Before we get into the brood box, I'm going to show you something that's very important here. And this is your queen excluder. The queen is going to be in the bottom in the brood box. And this is where she's going to stay all her life. She's going to stay in here. She's going to be laying eggs and just working down in the brood box. This will keep her from coming up into the super because wherever the queen goes, she'll be able to lay eggs. And obviously you don't want eggs in your honey and your super. So that keeps her down here to where you will only be able, the bees will only be able to make honey in the super box. The reason that the, the queen excluder works is because the queen is too big to fit through the grills of this excluder here. However, the worker bees and the drones can all fit through. Now we're into the brood box. In the brood box, it will also be a 10 frame box and ours is a deep box. So you can use mediums or you can use deep. Different people use different stuff, but we prefer to use the deep and we think it's great for somebody who's starting out. Inside our brood box, and in our 10 frames, we use foundation frames. So the bees are able to start building their combs up a little bit quicker with the foundation frames. There's other types such as just like this, but there'll be no foundation. And then they also make top bars, which is just the one 
the one bar on top and the bees will have to build their comb down off of that. In case you're wanting to see them side by side, this is the difference between a deep frame and a super frame. So you can see they're much different in size. Moving on down, we'll show you the bottom. Just to be clear, you don't leave this in 24-7 because if you do, the hive won't be able to breathe and it will start to overheat and die. So you only put this in on the day that you're checking for varroa mite. Here's your reducer. Your reducer will limit the amount of bees that can come in and out of the hive. There's different holes cut out in it. This one will just be how it operates normally with this tiny little hole. When you're first installing your hive and you need to feed it or when it's the season that there's no honey flow, you will also need to feed it and it has this op more open slot to where you can slip the feeder right in and the bees can still get out through the smaller hole. Now that we've talked about all the components for your beehive, we're going to talk about your bees because you can't have a beehive without bees. One of the ways that we get our bees is with a five frame nuke. They'll come in a container like this and there will be five frames in here full of bees and brood and probably some honey as well. So that's why when you were looking at our brood box you only saw five frames. The definition of a nuke would be a nucleus colony that has a queen inside already established and usually she's already been mated as well. There's other options to purchase your bees as well. You could just buy a package of bees that most likely won't come with a queen. In our personal opinion, we prefer to use the nuke to establish a beehive for the first time. But if you ask 100 different beekeepers a question, you'll probably get 400 different answers. We hope this video helped you on your journey into beekeeping, and we appreciate all the support that we've been getting from everyone on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to support our farm, you can head over to hailfamilyhomestead.com and check us out on all other social medias like Facebook, Instagram, and now TikTok. We hope you all have a good rest of your day, and as always, let's make this a productive week.